Hey, what's up everybody? So a couple of days ago, I filmed the installation for the Whitestone Doom, and I said that there would be a part two to that, that we would come back and talk about it. I went through and I gathered the top 100 questions that I saw. There were so many questions in the comments that I couldn't get them all, but I tried to get as many as I could. Ian in here from Udroid Mania, and you're watching my Q&A Sunday. So before we get started, I just wanted to say that I am working on a couple of other videos. I'll try and get at least one more out in addition to this one today. I'm just going to focus on giving answers to the questions that you guys left as well as, you know, talking about any comments that we have down below there. So let's go ahead and get started. The first question is, do I prefer this protector over Lin Sun G, Pell, and Elixar? And the answer is yes. There's a lot of moving parts and pieces here, plus you need some time to let the protector actually cure. But in terms of the end result and what you get, by far, it's the best one that I've tested so far. The next question is, can you remove it without residue being left on the screen? And I actually saw this probably 15 times or 20 times out of the questions below. So this is one of the overarching things that you guys really wanna know about. And I think at the end of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the protector. Right now, I really don't wanna do that because this protector is currently out of stock on Amazon and I don't know when they're coming back and when I'm gonna be able to get another one, but let's say that for the end of the video. I do have a protector for my Galaxy S8 Plus, so I think I'm gonna to have to switch to that for my daily driver. Just keep in mind that if I do remove the protector, then that means that I can't test it any further because it's not gonna be on the phone. The next question here is, is there a way to remove the protector? My understanding is yes. All you need to do is really peel it off. So we're gonna, again, take a look at that at the end of the video. We'll see just how easy it is to remove and what's actually left on the screen. Next question, do I recommend this one or the Spigen case friendly protector? And I'm assuming you mean Elixir here because it didn't really specify this in the comments below. As far as I'm concerned right now, the Whitestone Doom is the best protector that I've been able to get my hands on. There's no issues whatsoever around touch sensitivity. I've been using this protector all day since I've installed it and remember what I said is that I let this protector cure overnight a full 24 hours before I actually put a case on it. I waited about I want to say maybe two, two and a half hours or so, three hours. I don't know, a couple of hours before I actually started to use the protector. You want to have some time set aside to make sure that you're not going to be using the phone um, at least for a couple of hours after you do this install. So that's my recommendation. I'm saying wait a little while before you jump right in and start using the actual phone or before you decide to slap a protector on it. Just wait a little, wait a couple of hours. Where did I get this protector? You guys found this protector. You asked me to bring it in, do a review on it, and then let you know kind of how this thing fares out. So that's the purpose of these two videos is to go through that process and just see how good the Whitestone Doom is. And right now I gotta say it's fan fantastic. Next question, can you get this for the S7 Edge? Yes, right now, in fact, um, the S7 Edge and the iPhone version of this protector is the only ones that are available on Amazon. I think you guys were a little excited about this when you saw the first video, so if you were like me, you ran out and got it right away. So right now, it's currently out of stock. I don't know when it's coming back, but you may be able to get it from Whitestone's uh, website directly. I'm not sure. I haven't checked that. Know that that's also an option. You can either get it direct or if it comes back in stock on Amazon, maybe you can get it there. Is it permanent? I, I've seen a lot of comments around UV and the adhesive and that usually when you do that, it's permanent. I've also seen comments that says, no, it does peel off. And in fact, certain cases will actually push up the protector. Now I haven't run into that yet, but we're, we're gonna see at the end of the video. I'm gonna go ahead and take it off. Should I order one or not? At this point, I can't tell you what the result is gonna be if you go ahead and order the protector and install it on your phone. Sorry if I'm going through this a little bit fast in terms of answering the questions. I'm trying to keep this video to about five or six minutes, definitely under eight minutes in total, <laughs> given that the last video that I posted was about 14 minutes or so. So I wanna try and keep this one a little bit tighter just so that it's focused and I answer all the questions that you have. So the next question is, does the glue seep out of the edges of the glass? Does it run down the sides? Does it get into the actual, uh, earpiece and things like that and the answer is no in terms of the amount of adhesive that actually gets put on the display there's really not that much i'll show this from the install video so you can just see it's about the size of me maybe a little bit bigger than a quarter it didn't run down the sides it didn't get into my speaker or any of those kinds of things so if you're installing this properly you shouldn't have any of those types of issues next question is how easy is it to remove after a few months well, I just installed this the other day, so at this point I really can't answer that question. I'm going to take it off at the end of this video and I'm hoping that there's not going to be any issues, but we'll see. I did actually email this question out to Whitestone. I'm waiting for them to get back to me, so maybe I'll have some more answers on that later this week. So we'll see how that goes. Next question. Is it case friendly? The answer is 
Yes, it's very, very case friendly. I had no issues with this protector. It's very similar to Elixar and what we've seen from GPEL. It worked with everything that I paired it with. Later in the video, I'm gonna try and show you guys the Neo Hybrid right before I get ready to remove it because that's one of the cases, in fact, that it says pushes up the actual protector. So we're gonna take a look at that and see what happens. If it pushes up, we're peeling it off anyway, so then we'll see what's underneath. The other question is around the OtterBox Defender. Does it work with that? I haven't tested that case just yet, but I will test that and see what happens. I also have the Subcase Unicorn Beetle Pro. I'm gonna, you know, that also has the inside frame just like uh, OtterBox. Next question is, how does it feel with UAG cases? This is a UAG case right here. This is the Monarch. I love this case. I think, in fact, this case was made for this protector. Let me just leave it at that. Uh, next question is, but does, does it come off? Like I said, we're gonna see that at the end of the video, so just stick around, um, bear with me. Is it case compatible? I already answered that, yes. Everything that I work with, and I'm gonna stack up the cases in a little bit, just so that you guys can see exactly how many cases I tried this with. I mean, everything that I had that I could actually throw at it, I did, well, almost everything. There are a few cases I didn't put on it yet because I haven't gotten to those reviews yet, but I'm telling you, I tried so many cases and this thing, just it performs, it's great. What screen protector do I recommend? Depending on what happens with this one when we try and take it off, it's this is probably going to be my go-to protector from now on. If you See how excited I am? Dropping the phone. If you can get your hands on this, I'm telling you, 45 bucks is what I paid at the time that I uh, bought the protector a few days ago. If you guys can get your hands on this at that price or even lower, which would be better, I suggest that you do. But let's wait till the end of the video. Let's see how it does when I put it in water. Let's see what happens when I try and take the protector off. If we can get the thing off and it doesn't ruin the phone. Next question, is it permanently glued and how well do the edges feel? In terms of the edges, you can definitely feel the edges. This isn't the thinnest protector and that's a good thing in my opinion because you know that if it falls, you're gonna have that drop protection, which means that the protector should break first and not your screen. That's what we want. But in terms of the edges, you do feel it, if you, especially if you don't have a case on there. Man, I'm telling you, if you go with the Monarch case, it's the best thing. It's the best fit when you swipe. I mean, look at this thing. You, don't, you, you can't even feel the edge with this particular case. And this is the best case for this protector. Does it cover the entire screen? That's a question that you know you, a lot of you are interested in. As you can see here, you're gonna have that U-shape cut out up at the top. Um, you're also gonna have a little bit of space, about a millimeter or so at the bottom. Depending on what case you go with, you're gonna have some space along the side. So no, it's not an, an entire full screen protector. Let me just say this right now, especially with the curved screen devices, I think this is the new definition of what full screen is, meaning that you're gonna get about a good 95% coverage, 90, 95% coverage in terms of protection for the display. To me, this is full screen. This is as full as it's gonna get, especially, especially, <laughs> let me say this again, especially with this type of quality. This is, this, this is the best it's gonna get. So I think I beat that enough, right? Next is, can you see the screen from the side that isn't covered by the protector, like with GPEL? That depends on the case. With this Monarch, you don't see that gap. I'm telling you, this case comes that close without lifting the actual protector. You don't see the gap. If you're going with a really thin case that doesn't quite come all the way up to cover the sides, the curved sides, then you're gonna see a little bit of the protector. But to me, like I said, I think this is the new 100% that we're gonna get in terms of coverage. So you're always gonna have that little gap here along the side in terms of the, these protectors, especially if you want them to work and be case friendly. I mean. <laughs> For whatever reason, we can't get it all. Next question, oleophobic coating, how good is it? And this is something, I only seen this once in the comments below. I hadn't even actually thought much about it myself. In terms of oleophobic coating, this thing is the best, again, out of all the protectors that I've looked at. Elixar, GPEL, AM Film, Zag, you name it. Out of the protectors that I have in-house right now, even a couple of film protectors, this one has the, the best oleophobic coating by far. I mean, your finger just glides on it. It feels the most like the actual display itself. And when I say it feels the most like the actual display itself, I mean it feels the most like the actual display itself. I don't get a lot of fingerprints with this protector. I didn't find myself wiping it all day. You guys know I constantly have a microfiber cloth. I'm always wiping my phone all day long. I didn't feel the need to do that as much with this protector. And in my book, 
If I don't have to do that, that's a great thing. So oleophobic coating, thumbs up. Next question, if the protector breaks, how easy is it to get it off? If, if we can get enough views on this video, like go through the drop tests, that means I, there's the potential for me to actually break my phone. I gotta buy another one. You know, I can't be without the phone because I need to finish the rest of the reviews and things that I'm working on. I wanna do the drop tests to test out this protector. Let's get this video up. That way I can cover the costs of buying a new phone in case I really have to do that. Help me out with that and we'll definitely see a drop test. Next question, pricing. At the time that I purchased this, it was $45 on Amazon. Right now, like I said, it's out of stock. I don't know when it's coming back. I don't know if you can get it from Whitestone's website directly, but if you can and you can get your hands on this, to me, $45 for this is almost like a steal. I mean, I paid more than that for Zag protectors and they were complete garbage. Next question in a drop, does the protector break or does your screen break? You guys know I haven't done the drop test yet. We know what we have to do to get to see the drop test. So let's just go ahead and do that. Even if you have to put this video on uh, repeat yourself, let's go ahead and do that. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Woo, it's hot in here. Do you think this protector will come off without having to scrape off a bunch of adhesive? <laughs> I sure hope so, because if it does that, one, if it survives a drop test, and two, if it comes off and you can replace the thing relatively easy, this is going to be my all time number one protector. I'm hoping they make it for the Note 8 because I'd be grabbing a couple of these for myself right away. Right now, if this thing holds up and those things are true, this is the best thing that you can get. You guys are probably gonna be tired of hearing me say that during the course of this video, but I'm telling you, this, this protector could be the one. On the side of the phone, it looked like the adhesive didn't really seal. Did I see that correctly? Um, in terms of the seal that I got, I feel like everything is pretty tight. Everything is completely adhered to the screen. When I put this inside of the water, we'll see if there's anything that actually gets underneath, but I feel like everything's sealed. So I don't know if it was the camera angle that I was holding it at, or, you know, it could have been something else, but you know, as far as I can tell, everything's completely sealed here. Next question. And guys, we're only up to about 30 in terms of questions. So um, hopefully when I edit this down, this video is only about five or eight minutes or, you know, less than 10, <laughs> less than 10 at this point. Which one do I think is best? Do you really want me to answer that again? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Do you really want me to answer that again though? Oh, I guess I should answer it then, right? Yes. Just based on the couple of days that I've been using it, I certainly like it better than the Elixir. Elixir is not going away from my list, by the way. So if, I, if you pick that up because I recommended it, don't think that you're gonna get a bad protector there. I still stand by what I said. Elixir is a very nice protector. I think if you guys can get it and save some money and that's what you want, go ahead out and get that protector. But right now, this, this is moving to my number one. Is it compatible with the Samsung LED cover case? The answer is yes. I also filmed my Samsung case review video yesterday. That'll be coming in the next couple of days, but I can say yes, it worked. It definitely worked with every single one of those cases. Let's just wait for that video. I like those cases. I'm very happy with Samsung cases and yes, it works. In terms of GPL Elixir and this one, which one is the most case friendly? By the end of this video, I'm hoping FedEx brings my doorbell and I actually get my Spigen cases that I'm waiting for so I can finish this up. Right now, like I said, everything that I had in house as of yesterday, it worked with no issues. I just gotta pop on the Otterbox Defender, pop on that subcase and look at the Spigen cases. So hopefully by the end of this video, otherwise I'm gonna have to wait a couple of hours until whenever it is that they come. Air cushion from Spigen, does it work with that? We're gonna find out about Spigen later. Um, so sorry if I keep bringing up the Spigen questions. I'm just reading them from a list that I have here. We'll see those later. Do you highly recommend this protector? That's a funny question because any protector that I'm recommending to you guys, I stand by them, I highly recommend whatever it is that I'm saying. If I recommend it, then it's highly recommended. Next question, does it affect touch sensitivity? I think I touched on this earlier. No, it doesn't affect touch sensitivity. In fact, I've never seen anything like it. With this protector, it takes me back to flat screens. I mean, think about Note 5. Those screens are flat, they're square devices. You get a nice protector on there, it covers the entire display. And then when you're using it, it's just like you have nothing on the phone. That's what this takes me back to. It's just like there's nothing on the phone at all. I mean, this protector 
it, it feels that good. The glass feels great. The coating is great. There's no issues around touching, swiping, any of those types of things. How do the edges feel and does it still have that sexy rounded feel? The answer is yes. Again, you will if you're using this protector without a case. You're going to feel the edges. Like I said, they're not sharp but you will fill them. You're gonna definitely know it's there. I don't worry about cutting my finger with this protector. That was something that I did worry about with GPEL without a case. I don't do that here. Oh, can I run the grip sensor on it? Uh, yes, I can. Okay, grip sensor. Um, not sure if you guys are gonna be able to see this or not. Um, but as you can see here, it says it's working. It's working. Oh, it says release. So there you go. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but essentially what it says is it's working. When I grab the edges, this is what you get. It says release. If I release it, then it goes into grip sensor mode and it, it works. Works good with OtterBox. Um, every OtterBox that I tried, it wasn't Defender. Are there any dots if I use VR? There's no dots on this. I don't see any dots on this. I don't have Gear VR yet either. Um, I ordered it, I'm waiting for it to come. I don't have it for the S8, I have it for all my other devices. Just don't have it for the S8 or the S8 Plus yet. When I get that in, I'll really be able to answer, with certainty, I'll be able to answer whether or not there's really any dots there, but right now I don't see any. In the comparison video, we'll examine the protector you know, as close as we possibly can and we'll see what we see. Next question, uh, what happens if you crack? Again, we know, like I said, we, we know what we gotta do if we wanna see the drop test. Um, if, if we get the, if I get enough views on this, I'll certainly run out, grab another phone, and we'll get to dropping. We're about halfway through, so I don't know how many minutes we're up to right now. Hopefully it's like, le hopefully it's less than like four. We'll see. Does it work with the Speak and Tough Armor? Yes, it does. I tried that case in my wallet uh, video. So if you haven't seen that, I'll link it down below. You can see all the wallet cases. I know that's a question. And you, uh, the Speak and Tough Armor is there as well. Next question, and this is probably for most international. If you're not in the States, I'm gonna say international. This protector is probably not available internationally. I don't know exactly where uh, White, Whitestone ships to just yet. I know that Amazon, per Whitestone, said that they weren't shipping it internationally yet. Next question, looks cool, but is it hard to remove? Is there any way to have it shipped to uh, Australia? I don't know. I mean, I got to talk to Whitestone. I sent them an email. I asked them all the questions about international shipping. When are they going to do those things and whatnot? So as soon as I know, I'm definitely coming back on here and sharing that information with you. Also, I asked them to, you know, partner up with me and let's do a giveaway because there are so many of you that are international outside of the States. And if I can, I'm going to try and give some of these away. Even if they don't, I'm going to buy a couple and give a couple away just because of the support that you guys show me on the channel. That's the least that I can do. Like I said, we're in this together. You guys need protectors. I'm trying to find them. I need protectors. If I can help a couple of you, then, you know, that's what I'll do. Stick around. Does it work with the Spigen Ultra Hybrid? My doorbell didn't ring yet. Does the protector work with any type of case on it? Yep. Sure does. Next question is, does it work with the Samsung clear cover? Yep. Yep. Actually, like I said, I'm, I'm very happy with um, the performance on the Samsung cases. That video is coming later this week. Make sure that you come back and check those out. If you're, if you're interested in the Samsung cover and you haven't seen them, you're going to like them. Next question. Can I check to see if it works with the OtterBox Defender? Certainly. Don't know right now, but you know, we'll find out. Since you have to UV cure it, does it leave a bunch of residue behind? Let's find out. We're on almost the 70th question, so won't be too much longer. Next question, uh, does it lift if you use a case? Not with any of them that I've used so far. We're gonna find out about the Neo Hybrid when that doorbell rings. Next question, price, $45. Does it work with carved uh, cases? Yep. No gaps on this? There's gaps. All right. Pair it with the right case, like this Monarch case. There's no gap. No noticeable gap. I can feel the air gap when touching the screen because of the adhesive being only on the sides. Do I experience that with this protector? No, my friend. Not at all. Uh, it's not here. Uh, not with this one. No. It sometimes takes multiple tries, and this is actually a good one. It sometimes takes multiple tries to pull down the notification tray. Is that an issue on this protector? Um, 
four out of five times, 80% of the time, it's gonna work. Maybe 80% is too low of a number. Let's say 90, 95% of the time, it's gonna work. I also use Nova Launcher. I set that gesture just because if there is an issue, I don't wanna be, I don't I don't have to worry about that. I like this protector so much that I'm willing to overlook if there's any notification tray issues. But like I said, maybe four out of five times, it'll definitely work. That fifth time, maybe, maybe not. That's why I use Nova Launcher.